love this solo by Charlie Parker. The Billy's Bounce solo is great inspiration, it's clear and it's very easy to start out with if you're transcribing solos. We'll get back to this inspiring solo later in the video. When you practice you get better, well that's no news. But one of the most difficult and challenging things is what and how to practice to get you towards your practice goals. <laughs> I get a lot of questions from people around asking what they should practice. And I mostly always ask this question right back. What are you practicing now and what do you want to achieve? I'm playing some tunes, I'm soloing a bit, I want to know the chords better. And here it comes, I also want better technique, so I'm looking for the best scale exercises there is. You want to play tunes and you want to solo, that's totally understandable. And then you want the best scale exercise to learn technique. And this is what doesn't work. Practicing scales for technique and playing songs on the side. So before you're starting to practice practice anything is very important to know. That technique is not some necessary evil that needs another approach than playing music. Music is not supposed to be separated in two camps like music and technique. In this video I want to go into five practice points that are really essential for your learning. And these are probably the most important focus points when you practice. Let's get started. Music is one thing. And then there's this, you play what you practice. So if you start practicing your scale like this. <laughs> and they are not linked into your music. Your music will sound like your practicing scales. So with this in mind, let's look into what to practice. <laughs> melody is the most important so start with learning the melodies of the tunes you play because from the melody you can find out what technique you need to solo over the tune. You will probably need the chords and the scales and this little exercise is great for learning the arpeggios. <laughs> Also learning the scales like this. You see that I have directly put them over the form of the blues. And remember when you are practicing both exercises, make them sound musical. If you think this is a big step, let the lesson manual on Patreon help you. I have written all these chords and scale exercises on the blues. And to see how you can turn these exercises into solos, I have added lots of solo etudes using the chords and the scales. Everything is grab and go, the link is in the description. And the result could be this only using scales and chords. This is a small part actually taken out of one of the etudes on Patreon. The link to Patreon is in the description. The next step explains itself. Yeah. Play songs. So when you listen to music, you do not listen to somebody is practicing. You listen to music. So you must also want to play music that people want to listen to. People are listening to songs and not you practicing some scale exercise. So try working towards you can perform. So playing either for yourself or for an audience. Work on the melodical playing. <laughs> not only playing two five ones. The songs you are playing give the practiced material life because you put it into context. So the materials, the scales and the arpeggios you can use in different sections of the tunes. This means that you are playing your own version of the tune. Use your creativity to make up beautiful melodies that you can actually play over the songs you are playing. And the best place to put all your practice materials are into songs that people want to listen to. So all this talk about practicing seems like we have 100 hours a day to practice in. We don't. The lucky thing is you do not need a lot of time to practice as long as you play very focused practice. And a fast and focused practice is much better than a long and lousy practice. So do not use hours on planning what to do. Keep it simple. And with only 15 minutes you get very far. Use 5 minutes on technique. Use 5 minutes on making licks. Use 5 minutes on adding this into your music. But having only 15 minutes means that you need to have extreme focus. But these 15 minutes are much more worth than two hours of not focused practice. So I want to give an example on focused practice. So let's say I have five to ten minutes. My goal would be to play a technical exercise I want to add into music. And let's say that the music is the first two bars of a blues. <laughs> So I'll practice getting these thirds into my fingers, practice them up and down and use a metronome for the good timing. The thirds can represent any technical exercise you want to get into your fingers and that you can use in your music. When you have gotten the thirds down in a satisfying tempo, start applying them into your music. And here the satisfying tempo is a bit open. Think of a tempo that you can achieve in one practice tempo. This could be tempo 60, 70, 80, 200. It really doesn't matter. 
fit it into your level of playing. And immediately after finishing the technical practice, add the technical stuff into a musical setting. Sit down and use a couple of minutes to do this. And this is exactly where you get creative with the material. And mix this little part of what you have already going in your solo. And this could be some of the content in your 15 minute practice, like 5 or 10 minutes of your practice time. Super short and 100% focused practice, getting the material into your play. Next step, I think that many players get hung up on what to play in the bar and not so much looking at where they are going. Knowing where the music or where your lines are going is super important. So try this approach playing into the target notes of the next bar. I choose the target note I want to hit in the next bar. And these are the chord tones I really like the sound of on the C7. The D, the E, the G, the A and the B flat. And the ninth. The D sounds most amazing, I think, so I'll play into that one. That's my target note. And yes, it's that simple. I'm just adding two notes going into that D on the C7. When you start thinking like this, the simplicity of going into the target note by just adding a few notes in the previous bar, you will become great and you get much more clear and connected solos. And when you have gotten this down, you can always elaborate on the lines you have made. <laughs> Adding some thirds in the scale on the G7 and on the C7, I'm making a little end there. And the last point I want to mention is the most important thing. Keep being inspired. So this means listen to great recordings and absorb the music. And yeah, I think it's a real useful tool also, you know, to, uh, to learn solos or learn parts of solos. Uh, I know that's a question that's often asked me. Did I learn solos? And uh, the answer is yes. If I heard a lick that I like, I'd, I'd steal it. There are tons of transcription out there on YouTube and you can easily find them. And this is a great way to get this into your system. Search for it and play it. So do what Michael Brecker just said. Copy, borrow, steal the phrases you really like and make them happen in your own playing. Learn the sound of the phrases you like and make them your own. When you're making the phrase your own, you alter the phrase and make it into your own playing. And add the technical exercise from earlier into that phrase. The lesson manual on Patreon is a great stepping board to getting into these five steps of practicing. Find the link in the description. If you want to check out more great leads in what and how to practice, I really recommend you to click on this video. A Coltrane, Brecker and Chris Potter feature on how to get everything you play to sound like music. Play music, have fun.